What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is the 2018 Honda Accord Sport. Huge thanks to Honda for providing me with this very sweet Accord Sport to review for you guys today. So about the Accord Sport, well, this is the all new Accord, of course, uh, for 2018. And this is the Sport one, which you can get in a manual, which this one has. This one has the 1.5 liter turbo engine with the manual. You can also get the Sport trim with the 2.0 T motor, which has more power. And you can also get that with a manual as well. But this Sport trim is the only way you can get the manual, but it's still a really nice trim, the Sport trim. You got the nice large 19 inch wheels. I love the front ends on these new Accords, by the way, just so they have the standard LED headlamps that look really, really cool and futuristic and I think it's a really attractive looking design going out to the sides here just a really nice flowing uh, shape there it's a longer Accord uh, this time around and uh, it just it's a really good looking vehicle though with lots and lots of space as you'll see in a minute uh, out back there it's also very attractive not quite as attractive as the front in my opinion but still a very good look although it might be a little conservative and overall I think it's a really great look that you know isn't over the top like some of the others out there it's just uh, attractive and just a good looking design that I think will age really well. Right, so the interior of the Accord Sport, well, it's a very nice place to be here on these all new 2019 Accords. Although the Sport model is the second lowest trim, but you still get so much great equipment here that it really doesn't feel even remotely close to a lower trim model. Anyway though, first thing first, sitting down in these seats, really nice uh, combination of cloth and leather here on the sides of the seats, and just a really nice uh, smooth, silky cloth that feels expensive actually, and uh, still is very grippy though, and so these seats really hold you in well. Well, good bolstering as well here so that uh, you know it's obviously not sports car like with the bolstering but a little uh, more sporty than I think you get in a lot of other mid-sized family sedans um, and they've held me really well in corners through my week of driving here and uh, they're very comfortable as well I took it on a highway road trip uh, for about six and a half hours and they were very very comfortable seats um, and so overall I have no complaints whatsoever these seats are really great Next to the steering wheel in the Accord Sport, which is a really great wheel. It has a perfect nine and three grip. Nice 10 and two notches and a good th actual thickness to the wheel. It's a little thicker than you might expect. And actually it feels a little sporty in that regard. You have a few buttons on it here, um, you know, for some driver assistance stuff, cruise control on the left here. It'll also, uh, you know, do the controlling for the uh, digital gauge uh, portion and what you can uh, set up through there. And it has a little scroller wheel for that part that feels actually really has a nice resistance to it and feels uh, heavy and expensive. Um, so, Overall, a really nice feeling wheel that's great to use. Next to the gauges here in the Accord Sport, which again, for 2018, all Honda Accords get these really cool gauges that are partially digital. The only analog portion really is the speedometer. Otherwise, it's completely digital there on the left, and they do a really good job of kind of blurring the lines of what is digital and what is analog, because uh, you have an analog-looking tachometer there as standard, uh, but you can scroll through that left portion, and you can get all kinds of different stuff, whether you want your trip information, uh, album art for whatever music you're listening to, uh, um, you know, there's all kinds of different things you can go through on there. Uh, the only interesting thing I will say, though, is although this is the sport trim of the Accord, uh, there is no sport mode. Last year, I drove a 2.0T Touring 2018 Accord, and that had a sport mode, and you actually got a boost gauge whenever you went into that sport mode. Unfortunately, you don't get a boost gauge in this cluster in the sport, at least that I could figure out. Um, and so that's one thing that is missing, uh, but not a huge deal. Uh, overall, just excellent gauges. Coming over to the center of the dashboard here, it's really, really great. Right up top here, you have an excellent uh, Honda Link infotainment system, uh, which is eight inches in size here for the sport trim, and uh, has a really nice volume and tune knobs with actual metal feeling uh, material. Might be plastic, but feels really nice and high quality. I also love how you have these little buttons that stick out above the screen here, so it's easier to find whenever you're driving. It's less distracting than uh, the capacitive touch buttons that they've had in prior Hondas, um, and of course, great to have the volume and tune knobs make a return here. Uh, the actual screen screen itself is really nice and easy with its setup. It's a little different than some of the others where you know they'll actually divide out like FM audio from Bluetooth. So you can go straight to what you want to go to and you can actually customize and arrange those uh, and download different ones and uh, have different you know setup there all customized to exactly what you use every day. So it's really nice that you can customize that. So it'll, once you actually own one of these and get used to it, it's going to be really a lot more efficient I think than a lot of the other setups out there. It also does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto which is excellent and a really nice uh, feature. The only one this does not have, this is 
doesn't have any satellite radio integration on the sport trim, at least not here with the 1.5T uh, motor. So I think you have to go up to EX or higher to get satellite radio, and I personally really enjoy that, so that's the only SOAR exclusion from this infotainment in the sport model specifically, um, but otherwise just a really great infotainment system. Also on my six and a half hour road trip uh, in this vehicle, I actually got to test, of course, the stereo system for quite a while, and uh, it is pretty good. You know, again, for a standard, you know, a stereo system in a $27,000 car, uh, it sounds really good. It's pretty nice and powerful. Obviously not, you know, the most amazing thing ever, but again, for the class of vehicle we're in here, uh, and it's not any kind of upgraded stereo, just for a standard stereo, it's really good. Coming down, you see your three knobs here for climate control. Uh, very nice and easily set up here. Uh, and I love how whenever you turn the knobs, it actually has this little backlighting that will reflect whether you're going colder or hotter with blue and red lighting. And that is just a really cool little touch. And things like that, to me, feel really uh, high quality and futuristic. Just to have those little extra details, the extra mile, that is what really sets it apart uh, from some of the others, I think. And I really like that uh, there. Coming down, you just have a button for econ mode, brake hold, and then your parking brake. And that is it. There is really only a handful of buttons here in this whole center stack which is so refreshing to see and so because of it uh, it's just a really user-friendly and also good looking space. Storage space in the 2018 Accords is really quite good. First off in the doors here you have a pocket which has a bottle holder and another large uh, pocket there in it as well so lots of great space there. Coming over to the center here you have this little cover that you press and it opens up to a very deep uh, cubby that in some of the higher trims has a wireless charging pad. This one doesn't have that but it's still just a really nice large space. You also have a fast charging USB port there which will also you know hook up for uh, audio and inputs and you also have a power outlet in there as well so all very handy handy hookups there and a really nice large space. Coming back you have two cup holders which are really deep in here um, so you can fit really tall bottles and it still really wouldn't get in the way of your shifting much. You know when we had standard takeout cups in here um, it was nice because since they were so far down it doesn't get in the way of the shifter whenever you're shifting gear. So that's a really nice and thoughtful inclusion there and so really great space with that. And then you have the center armrest which is uh, a little bit padded. It's not the softest honestly um, but again on my long road trip I didn't feel uncomfortable at all resting my elbow on there so pretty good job there and then you open that up and you have a uh, first off a little coin tray thing up top here um, that you know is uh, removable and then you also see down below here a much larger area that you can fit all kinds of stuff in there there's a, another power outlet in there as well and so overall really good amount of space in there and then the last little bit of storage space is a sunglasses holder you will see up here in the roof Backseat space in these new Accords is just astounding to me. I mean, it is definitely a longer car and you benefit with that very, very spacious backseat. I'm five foot nine, me sitting behind myself, I easily have like nine inches to spare there of leg room. Um, so I mean, tons and tons of space. You could fit, you know, people up front and in the back that are over six feet tall without an issue. Uh, plenty of headroom as well, you know, cause it does slope a little bit with the roof line, but not so much that it cuts off headroom really. And so it's a very, very spacious backseat. Uh, the only thing again, this being the sport trim being a little bit lower you don't have rear uh, air vents uh, and you don't have any kind of hookups back there either but you do have bottle holders in the doors and a fold down center armrest which is very softly padded for the rear one there and also has two cup holders built into it as well so I mean just a very very comfortable back seat and just tons and tons of space I think it's actually best in class I mean I I think the Passat was my previous uh, largest back seat in this segment I think this has it beat it's a uh, really really huge <laughs> Trunk space in the 2018 Accord is equally massive. I mean, it is a super wide opening to the trunk there. That's uh, a very wide space in there. Uh, very, it goes far back. Uh, it's also uh, pretty deep as well. You also, uh, beneath that floor, will find um, an actual spare tire, uh, which is nice to see since that's uh, starting to be removed little by little from a lot of cars. So good to have a spare there and still have a very nice large trunk. Uh, and also, if you need additional practicality, those uh, rear seats do fold flat. Uh, and so you can, you know, pass through things here into the interior um, and so overall just a very versatile uh, and you know very spacious back seat and trunk. All right, so start up and go for a drive. Before I even start it up though, I first want to highlight the sound it makes whenever you get into this car because you just Like that instantly puts you in a good mood. <laughs> but anyway, nice little touch. But anyway, it's keyless entry and push button start. So you just leave the key in your pocket hit the engine start button and it starts right up. 
All right, so setting off in the 2018 Honda Accord Sport. Well, the first thing you notice, I think, is just how easy it is to use this manual transmission. A very nice light clutch that's very predictable. It'd be a great car to learn manual transmission on because it's just very, very easy. Hondas are always some of the easiest manuals to use, and this one falls right in line with those. A really nice, uh, sharp shifter, too, that uh, has light and short throws, but very, again, easy to find every gear uh, and to shift quickly with it, and it's just fun to use. Other things to note here about the Accord Sport. Uh, visibility is excellent in these 2018 Accords. You know, a nice large windshield and side windows are nice and large. View out of the back is great and so a very easy car to see out of. Um, and uh, you know, other things, you know, it has like nice and light steering uh, that's really easy to use. Everything just feels very uh, tuned in to your inputs. Uh, everything is a little bit on the lighter side so you have to be a little more delicate with all of your inputs. Um, but I actually enjoy that because it, it makes it feel like it's more fine tuned but let's turn down onto this back road here and see how it does here we go <laughs> a little bit of wheel spin there this thing picks up and goes it's quick <laughs> you would think this being the smaller of the sports that it would be slower but this thing is still properly fast so uh, 0 to 60 time for these is 7.2 seconds the horsepower is 192 horsepower and 192 pound-feet of torque as well from a 1.5 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine it does have VTEC as well so that's a uh, cool and uh, it's not as extreme as the VTEC systems of old but still has your average you know 6500 rpm redline you still have a tiny bit of turbo lag before you get the full spool of the turbo and some of the lower rpms although it still does pull really well for only a 1.5 liter turbo engine um, it it feels way quicker like I said that 7.2 second 0 to 60 even is a little misleading because it feels a little quicker than that to me um, but it'll still spin the front wheels <laughs> And it's just a blast. I really love this thing. And I've been putting over 500 miles on it now in my week of driving. And um, I, it just has this thing that I can't quite put my finger on, but it's just fun to drive. Uh, it's just one of those things. I love rowing this manual transmission. I love just zipping around in this thing. It makes me want to drive faster um, and just makes me want to keep driving. And it's just, it's one of those cars that I truly am falling in love with. It is so fun to drive and just rip through the gears and rev out this little engine like crazy. But another thing that's lots of fun is the handling, which we will see here now as we're going around some corners. This thing handles amazingly well. Um, we're only on 19 inch wheels, but they're only 235 wide touring Goodyear tires, not even sporty tires. And I have tons of grip and it is so, so flat. It is mind blowing to me how good this new Accord handles, at least in the sport trim. It is like, I am just sipping around these corners. Like honestly, this is by far the best handling mid-size sedan I have ever driven, you know, as far as family sedans go. Um, you know, the only stuff that's above this is like the Alfa Romeo Giulia and stuff like that. Um, you know, like I, the Passat, the Ford Fusion Sport, the Malibu, all those handle way worse than this does. This just is so light. It only weighs 3,154 pounds here in the 1.5T Sport trim, and it you can feel it. I mean, this thing, it just it invokes so much confidence. I just, I just want to put it like a sports car because it can take it um, and it's amazing I couldn't even imagine you put some actual sport tires on this thing um, I just I don't even know how it could get any better it just it handles so well I'm like blown away like I will say I have not driven the new Camry so I can't say 100% this is the best handling in this segment because I haven't driven that but all the other ones I've driven this is the be by far the better handler um, and also the new Camry uh, also weighs at least 100 pounds more than this in every one of its trims so I am really skeptical that the Camry is going to handle better than this does uh, this just it's just the lightness of the steering that allows you to dart into corners and it just feels eager because you have the light steering but then the chassis also is able to keep up with that there's no roll there's no lean there's no squishiness or wiggliness it's just sharp and planted but still very composed and still um, you know it's not stiff by any means it doesn't feel like a sports car as far as you know you don't feel every little bump in the road it's still a very smooth ride and it's one of those cars I it's just it's amazing that they can balance both these things and have such a comfortable and uh, you know sedate ride but then to be just cornering like it's on rails it just blows my mind I honestly and I I, I actually drove the 2.0 T touring one last fall and I only took it around a few corners but in only those few corners um, it handled well 
but it did not handle as good as, I, I don't remember it handling as good as this one. And I don't know if it's maybe the 1.5T motor, you know, having half of a liter less displacement over the front nose there will really just, you know, make this a lot sharper. I don't know if that's all the difference or if it's just I didn't have enough of an opportunity to really push that 2.0T touring. Um, but, you know, I think it's a combination of the lighter manual transmission, the lighter engine here in the 1.5T model. Um, overall, it's just, <laughs> I mean, I, I really did not, it blew me away. I was not expecting this thing to handle even close to this good. And I don't know how it's possible, but I'm having more fun in this car than I even had in the Civic Si. Um, it's just, I think this just, this even feels flatter and lower than the Civic Si to me. Um, which again, I don't understand. I'm just telling you guys what I feel from the driver's seat here. I can't make sense of it. All I know is this thing is amazing with its handling. Another thing that's really nice are the brakes here in the Accord Sport, which are actually upgraded. The Sport model is the only one where you get these uh, rotors that are 12.3 inches instead of, I think it's 11 uh, and a half inches that you usually get in all the other Accords. And even in the uh, you know higher trimmed Accords, you get the smaller brakes. Only this Sport model gets the bigger front brakes. Um, and they feel great. Uh, the brake pedal does, uh, it is a little light with its feel so that um, you have to be delicate with your you know, foot whenever you're, you're using the brake pedal, but um, it does have a very nice bite to it um, and it just, you have to just be a little delicate with it. Um, but it, it, again, it's very sensitive, so it's very fine tuned. Um, so you can be very precise with it, which I really like. It's very, very accurate. Uh, another thing is throttle response is actually really nice and quick. And because of that, it makes it very easy to rev match your down shifts here uh, in the Accord Sport. It's just, it's a very rev happy engine too. So like I said, it's just everything just is so fine tuned. It just, it's a, it feels like a real driver's car. Uh, you can feel the enthusiast uh, influence in the engineering of this car, I think. It, it really, again, you're just, it's just an Accord and you know, they've had this stereotype for so long of just being normal mid-size sedans, but this is something that I think enthusiasts should really consider. I love that Honda is sticking with the manual because it's only this and the Mazda 6 that even offer a manual in this segment anymore. And the Mazda 6 is slower with its manual transmission. Uh, it has less power, um, you know, because you can get both even this base, you know, 1.5T motor uh, has more power than the Mazda 6. And then you can, like I said, still get the 2.0T with this manual and that, uh, you know, 250 horsepower in a mid-size family sedan with a manual transmission. You're not going to find that any anywhere else out there um, and so it's really uh, awesome that Honda is sticking with that and shows that you know they love their enthusiasts and you know they want to keep the manual and the fun of driving alive. So enough of me gushing about the handling of the Accord. Other things to note about it here, uh, the ride like I said is very smooth over any pavement really um, but it's also nice and quiet in here too in a very refined car. Um, you know like I said many of my miles and my 500 plus miles of driving here were highway miles and um, um, highway cruising is really really nice in this car it's just again very smooth and also uh, this brings me into the next thing which is the Honda sensing which is this big thing that you know it's standard on every Accord now is Honda sensing suite um, and so it has your typical uh, you know autonomous braking if it you know senses a car ahead of you uh, it also does the uh, road departure mitigation and uh, lane keep assist uh, also has a backup camera you know and a few other things going on as well and I was able to test out a lot of that tech you know, the adaptive cruise is also included at no charge with that system. Um, and I was able to test all that out on the highway um, and in my week of driving here. I will say the, uh, you know, the collision avoidance tech, there were still a few times where a car is pulling off of the road and it, you know, thought I was going to rear end them. And it's like, nope, they're going to get out of the way. And that's something that every single one of these systems, regardless of what manufacturer it is, all do the same thing. Um, but at least with this one, it didn't start beeping or actually break. It just had a little flashing light where the tachometer is saying, break, break, break and that was it um, and it went away very very quickly it's not like some of the other systems where it really is a little more in your face this is a little more passive while still getting your attention but it wasn't quite as annoying in my experience um, the road departure mitigation also actually lets me go close to the shoulder a little more than some of the others so I was able to you know kind of hit the apex so to speak and it's it won't freak out at you which is something that I've in some of these other cars if you're not perfectly in the middle of your lane it starts freaking out even if you're not even close to the line so I like that they, it seems like they've fine-tuned their system a little bit better than some of the others. And thankfully, you still can easily turn it off. There's a button right here next to the trash control button. Just hit that. You can turn it off um, and, you know, not have those interventions if you don't want them. 
Um, but I will say some of the tech is pretty cool. The adaptive cruise uh, system does work very well. Although I wish there was a setting to make it um, a little less of a following distance because even at the shortest following distance setting, it still is like uh, probably two car lengths or one and a half car lengths ahead. So that, you know, a lot of people think like, why aren't you going faster? If you're in a line of cars, you're gonna have people still cutting in in front of you because, um, you know, there's no way to get it to follow any closer. Um, now this one being the manual, it still will, you know, have the full adaptive cruise capability it just does not have the stop and go because obviously it can't operate the clutch for me so um, that's the only limitation there with the manual but otherwise the adaptive cruise works great the lane keep assist system is awesome as well I use that for you know quite a few miles on the highway and um, it's uh, honestly feels like you know almost more precise than even like Tesla's autopilot because with that system what I've seen from others I have not personally used it but it seems to bounce around in the lane and kind of pogo back and forth this one doesn't this one uh, is actually it, it'll keep itself in its lane really really well um, obviously you do have to keep your hands on the steering wheel if you take your hands off for more than like 10 or 15 seconds it'll say steering required you have to have a little bit of pressure on the steering wheel um, but it'll still basically drive itself on the highway um, you know you just have to kind of let your hand be there and kind of you know give it a little nudge here and there but otherwise I mean they're really close with this tech and it's a very intelligent lane keeping system um, which does help take some of the fatigue out of uh, driving a little bit you know and so um, you know obviously I still prefer to just drive myself and uh, not rely on these systems but for those that do want the tech I will say it's pretty good another thing that uh, wowed me on my highway drive is the highway fuel economy so fuel economy in the 2018 Accord with the 1.5 T manual is rated at 26 in the city, uh, 35 on the highway for combined average of 30. This vehicle outperformed the EPA in both uh, my city driving here where most cars usually underperform their actual stated numbers and also on the highway it far exceeded um, what I what it was supposed to get. So on the highway driving six and a half hours from New York City to Pittsburgh I averaged 40.6 miles per gallon and I wasn't taking it slow I was you know going a little over the speed limit sometimes and stuff like that 40.6 mpg that's a full 5 mpg higher and the most amazing thing is this six speed manual they want you to have good passing power without downshifting so uh six gear on the highway at 80 miles an hour you're still almost at 3,000 rpm so this little 1.5 liter is still turning 3,000 rpms on the highway and i'm still getting 40 miles per gallon um it's just really I was again shocked at just how good it performed and then as far as city stuff goes uh, I'll pull up right now you know so in my 155 miles of around town driving I still average 30.3 mpg and again the city rating is only 26 combined is 30 so it's right in line with that but I did very little highway driving after that initial uh, road trip and so again for more a majority of highway or majority of city miles to still be getting 30 mpg is again so so impressive to me and so it really it's a very economical engine that still is a blast even whenever I'm you know beating on it like I am I'm still getting 30 mpg in this big long comfortable car um, it just Again, it doesn't make sense to me how this thing is as good as it is. And the last thing I have to mention about the Accord Sport here is the pricing of it. And again, I hate to gush because uh, I've been gushing most of this review, but it's another thing that is just so impressive to me. This Accord Sport, there, there's really no options you can get. It's just basically like the sports all get the same stuff and that's it. Um, so there's not much customization, but still, I uh, th these Accord Sports only cost $26,670, including destination. So I'm under twenty seven thousand um, dollars for all this stuff um, you know you get the Apple CarPlay the 8 inch screen the digital gauges uh, all the safety tech all this stuff in it's you know less than twenty seven thousand dollars again just the value proposition is just off of the charts um, the only nitpicky thing I can say in regards to um, you know the uh, the trim level and stuff is the sport trim you know I wish it still had a few of the niceties to it I think what according to what I read uh, the 2.0 T version if you get that with the manual then you do get for example heated seats um, and I think one or two other things so if you want some of the niceties I think you know you can get that stuff if you go for the 2.0 T version um, which is an extra like $4,500 
so that puts you at 31,000. Still a phenomenal bargain, I think, um, for what you get, but I think the 1.5T is even a stronger value. Um, but like I said, I just, I, you know, stuff like you don't get a proximity key, so I still have to pull the key out of my pocket in order to unlock it. Um, I don't have satellite radio, like I mentioned earlier, um, and I don't have heated seats. And now with these cloth seats, I don't really miss the heating function, um, you know, but it is nice to have in the winter still. Um, so those are the main three things that you do get in the EX trim, the very next trim up, but unfortunately you don't get the manual in the EX. Um, so, you know, but it sounds like 2.02, .02, you get the heated seats, you get the proximity key. So if you're not a huge satellite radio fan, though, it's not an issue. And I think, like I said, even myself, I love, you know, all the gadgets and I love all the tech. Um, I would live with those three exclusions at this price level and be totally fine with it. Um, like, you know, I, it's really amazing. You know, I think these are definitely worth a test drive. They're definitely worth checking out um, because of just the value proposition being so high, the fun factor being so high, the unique offering of a manual transmission in 2018 is something that uh, is, you know, something that should be praised, honestly, because again, there's more and more companies turning their backs on the manual and Honda is doing their part to save them here for us. Um, so overall, yeah, I think if you are even remotely considering a vehicle in this segment, test drive one of these, especially the 1.5T. I think you'll be surprised. I think this car will surprise a lot of people. I personally didn't even have it on my own radar, but if I needed a dad car or I needed, you know, a practical four-door car, this would be high on my list. You know, like I said, at the price, it's really, really tough to beat. It handles better than a lot of sporty vehicles. For example, the WRX. This handles better than the WRX. Um, and it's not even a sports vehicle, so to speak. You know, it's just a mid-sized family sedan that they just did a really, really good job with the sport trim. Um, it's just an absolute fun combo. So anyway, huge thanks once again to Honda for providing me with this Accord Sport to review for you guys today. And uh, thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.